Welcome to ESPN Saturday Night Football presented by the new windows and tonight's Pac-12 matchup between number four Stanford and USC. You are looking at the Los Angeles Coliseum, the Stanford Cardinal, fresh off a season-defining win over Oregon, invade USC. The Trojans are suddenly relevant again. They've won three in a row and four of five since Ed Orgeron became their head coach. Good evening and welcome everybody with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks for dropping by. We talk about that big win by Stanford over Oregon, but if they were to slip up tonight, guess who jumps back into first in the North? Oregon. I'm glad you reminded folks of that because the game was so lopsided. I think people forget. People just assume that Stanford's be able to get to that Pac-12 championship game, but they're four quarters away from losing a game and putting Oregon back in the driver's seat. So it's a big game tonight, not just for the BCS standings, but for the Pac-12 North and for SC. They're still hanging around in the Pac-12 South. They've really done a great job of turning things around under Ed Orgeron now at four and one since he's taken over and uh, there's a Stanford uh, running back who should apply for overtime Tyler <laughs> Gaffney 45 carries my friend unbelievable what he did against Oregon last week and, and uh, David Shaw admitted to us that he's going to have to have more balance tonight which means his quarterback's going to have to make some plays probably more play action plays on first and ten Kevin Hogan great leadership he's coming off a great game but he's going to have to have more production in the passing game that means you know, not only being able to stretch plays and, and, and being able to create but also finding ways to get the ball to Ty Montgomery, number seven. Keep an eye on him tonight. Arguably their most explosive player, and they want to try to get him the ball, not only receiving, but also trying to get more touches, maybe even in the running game tonight. And, of course, for USC, Marquise Lee is healthy tonight. They're balanced now with his return. They are very balanced, and, and I think that this is the healthiest that they've been as an offense in weeks, maybe months, to have all these pieces in place. I think it starts with their running game because it seems to take some of the pressure off of Cody Kessler. He gets the play-action passing game going, but make no mistake about it. Stanford's front seven and their entire defense will be challenged because of big playability of this SC offense on the outside. Nelson Aguilar on one side and as you said Brent Marquis Lee. I think at the beginning of the year I thought he was the most talented wide receiver in college football. He was banged up. He's fought through some injuries. He's healthy now. He knows that this is a showcase game for him on this big stage. Look for number nine to make some big plays tonight. Yeah and uh, Nelson Aguilar can uh, yeah. throw in a few big plays of his own. No doubt about that. Don't try to get him the ball in <laughs> space. <laughs> so it should be fun here tonight. USC and Stanford, the first sellout crowd of the season here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. 93,000 plus. And John here, former USC star Matt Leiner, leads the Trojans out of the tunnel. Nice to have a USC buzz back in Los Angeles, and our Heather Cox is down below with the reason why. Interim head coach Ed Archer. Heather. Brent, thanks so much. Coach, as Brent mentioned, you're four and one since taking over as interim head coach. With so much uncertainty about the future path of this program, how have you gotten your guys to focus like they have? They just bought into the energy and the style. We're going to play physical football. They're a great group of young men. And, Coach, you play the number four team in the nation. They've got a four-year winning streak in this rivalry. What gives you the confidence that your team can win tonight? We're Trojans. We're USC. We're prepared to win. Coach, enjoy it. Thank you. Fight on. And on the other side, the man who coached Stanford to a Rose Bowl triumph a year ago, there is David Shaw, who has done a fabulous job after Jim Harbaugh turned the program around. Folks, get ready. Here's one of the most explosive return men of the country. Ty Montgomery, number seven, back deep for the Cardinal. In his career, he's returned three kicks for touchdowns. So after deferring, USC kicks it off. And this is Montgomery. They have tried to seal him up at the corner. And with that speed, he's able to get over here to the near side before he's finally knocked down on the 22-yard line. And we see the Stanford quarterback here, the junior from McLean, Virginia, Herbie, Kevin Hogan. 6'4", 230 pounds, seems to get better and better each time out. And I think tonight, you know, last week he didn't throw the ball very much. Tonight he will be asked to throw the ball more. I think Stanford needs more of a balanced approach because this SC defense will try to get upfield to slow down their running game. Outstanding offensive line. We'll talk about them throughout the evening. 
Ryan Hewitt is number 85, seven fullback in front of Tyler Gaffney. He too is having an outstanding year. There's that power look so familiar for Stanford fans. Gaffney's first carry of the night. 44 carries shy of what he did against Oregon, and the, the impact fellas look like this. You're right about Gaffney. What a workhorse. Not just 45 last week. He's averaged 34 the last three games. Ty Montgomery's got to get more touches. Mike Bloomgren, the offensive coordinator, is saying that to us. And Leonard Williams playing with a bang shoulder. We'll see how he holds up. By far the most talented player on the defensive front. Josh Shaw, number six, will shadow Ty Montgomery, try to take him away from this passing game and force Stanford to throw to some else besides Montgomery so Anthony Wilkerson checks in early in the game as a tailback and Gaffney comes to the sideline behind Hewitt behind the left side and a very stout defensive front here in the early going for the Trojans so this is the line working against a different kind of defense here tonight Wilkes is the man in the middle but keep an eye on David Yankee the left guard if he pulls to lead the sweep from the weak side he's one of the most lethal pulling guards in the country third down and six what a great combination of size and athletic ability from that the guard spot but you're right this is a different group and an, an aggressive mindset from USC it's different for Stanford playing on the road tonight on third and 11 Far side, deep, got a man open, and it was bobbled. Incomplete. Ty Montgomery had a step and had a shot at a big third down reception. Well, this is the matchup tonight. We're gonna we're gonna have to keep a close eye on third and long, and Ty Montgomery just goes right by Shaw. I think Shaw on third and long was anticipating that he might pull up at about 12 to 15 yards, but he goes right by him. The, the ball couldn't have been thrown any better by Kevin Hogan. Goes right through the hands of Ty Montgomery. So now Aguilar is back deep here for the Trojans. Ben Ryan punts it away. Here comes Aguilar, he drops it and pounces on it at the 37-yard line. Remember now with Aguilar, as you look at him, in the last game he had two punt returns for touchdowns against Cal, 75 and 93, and here he's lucky to get on that fumble right now. And uh, Herbie is our first look here tonight at number six, Cody Kessler from Bakersfield, California, out of Centennial High School. He's 6'1", 215 pounds, and the, and the best way to describe him is, is he is an athlete, a winner, a gym rat, whatever description you want to say about Cody Kessler. That's the kind of player he is, and he's going to have to be a great leader tonight against his Stanford front seven. Well, Buck Allen was his running back on first down. Aguilar picks up eight or nine players. We get a penalty flag that is thrown. Wayne Lyons had coverage, and it was thrown directly at him. Face mask. I think uh, Lyons on that tackle. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number two. That's exactly how SC wanted this game to start at home. An underdog against a highly ranked team. The defense does its job. They catch a break when Montgomery drops it. Lions here on the first play. SC decides to throw against that physical front seven. Throw the football. Get it to the outside to one of the playmakers. And Lions with the penalty. 15 more yards added on to the play. Three receivers to the left for Kessler. Aguilar is the motion receiver. And he's sort of slotted with Lee outside him. Kessler looks in that direction, couldn't get an open man. Now the foot race fires it down. Great grab by Aguilar coming across the formation. Out of bounds, first down, Trojans. You get down in the third down situation. You know Stanford's going to get pressure. They do a good job with a stunt up front. The pressure gets home, but this is the athletic ability and what Kessler brings to the table. He keeps his play alive, breaks contain, and then spots Aguilar, who did a heck of a job of adjusting his route and keeping his eyes on his quarterback for a first down. That's 20 yards on third down and eight. So it's first down and 10. Buck Allen had a big game against Cal, too. He's the deep set running back. 
Richard sophomore from Tallahassee, Florida, who's been getting more and more reps since Orgeron became the head coach. And here comes Allen looking for the near side, tough run shy of the 10-yard line. Carter pushes him out of bounds. A little barking going on, just what you'd expect between these two. It's nice to see this offensive line healthy. They, they had This offense has battled through so many injuries, and I think the beneficiary has been Buck Allen these last couple weeks where he's been able to, to get on track, given an opportunity. You, know, you, you look at uh, Kevin Graff, he's had an ankle injury. A lot of these guys have had to be maneuvered and moved around, but I think right now they come in the last two or three weeks, better continuity, kind of gelling together at the right time. Clay Helton calling the plays after Lane Kiffin was dismissed and a great defensive play. You'll see plays like this all night from Stanford. Jordan Richards up from his safety spot. This is a veteran defensive unit. They read the play well. They come through the gaps and they're good tacklers in open field. Just to ask Oregon. No doubt about that. And, and ask Oregon also about Shane Scove. That time he, he blitzed Oregon all night and he timed his blitzes up so well. That time he blitzed the A gap between the center and the guard. It occupied some of the other rest of the offensive line and the defense was able to swarm to the football. So here's the Trojans second third down on this drive. Third down and seven. They get a first down at about the seven yard line. Kessler runs away from it now. Going to have to throw to the sideline and a grab is first and goal. Beautiful grab that time. Carter was over there and Marquise Lee makes his presence felt. Stanford rushes three. Kessler does a great job of stepping up in the pocket. The linebackers felt threatened. They stepped up, but really the adjustment by Lee coming back to the football, and the ball is thrown exactly where it had to be, away from Carter, who's a physical corner. And how about the toe touch there by the All-American receiver, Lee? So now we'll see if Vanuku will lead the way for Buck Allen. Power look. Play action. Throw back. Touchdown! Vaduku. His first touchdown of the season. The redshirt sophomore from Eureka, California. And Stanford did not see that coming. That's the right time to call that by Clay Helton. You indicated maybe that might be coming. I was right there with you. It's better than trying to run into that front from Stanford. A great call by Clay Helton. And with Matt Leinart leading this team onto the field, it kind of was reminiscent of those Matt Leinart days of throwing play action inside that five-yard line. Andre Hadari tacks on the extra point. No, he did not. Slid it off to the right. And that He's been struggling. To, yeah, continues to be a headache for Coach O. Now, take a look at this touchdown, folks, and I want you to see the raging Cajun on the sideline. Take a look at our man, Ed Orgeron. <laughs> Homecoming weekend here on the USC campus, and a whole lot of things to celebrate this week. Game day made its first appearance in the middle of the campus. And in case you missed that sword play between my partner and Lee Corso, poor old coach was bleeding after it was over. Man, you wounded him. I hope you bring that saber up here to the booth, man. <laughs> All of a sudden, I look up, there's blood coming down his face. I'm, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, Adari kicks it away now. Here is Ty Montgomery, and he hesitates and then elects to come out. To about the 24-yard line. Greg, go back to this touchdown. The safety right here, Ed Reynolds, is a guy I want to keep your eye on, along with, obviously, the fullback who's going to go out in the flat. But look at this little rub route, almost a pick by Aguilar, who takes Reynolds out and frees it up for the fullback to go out into the flat. As you said, it was really about the timing of the call. Second down and goal, fake the play action, occupy the defense, make their eyes think about that. But the rub route there, the pick by Aguilar, set it up. And the quarterback, Kessler, celebrating. Moxie, that's how Origin described Kessler. M-O-X-I-E, a quarterback with Moxie. Took over after being third string under the previous regime, and now we come back with Tyler Gaffney. Need four yards on this third down. Here comes the blitz, gets it off. And that time, the receiver hangs on. It was Jeff Trojan. How about that? There's a penalty flag down, however. But I was just about to say, how about that for a name coming in here to the Los Angeles Coliseum? Personal foul, rushing the passers. Defense number 94, late contact. A 15-yard cut through the end of the game of the play. 
That is big Leonard Williams, Harvey. And what a clutch job of holding on to the football. Brent, you just said, there's the pressure. They brought the blitz. Williams ended up getting there, and he came in a little bit late. Great catch by Trojan going up into traffic and making the catch. And right here, he just can't do that. Right in front of the referee, they threw it. Leonard Williams, the most active and athletic defensive lineman. But because of that, they pick up a first down. You throw 15 more yards on it. And now a Stanford offense, it was reeling a bit as across midfield. With the ball spotted at the Trojan 44. Quick strike, Montgomery hangs on this time. That's a very, very good call by the offensive coordinator. Give him something that he knows he's going to catch, rebuild his confidence in a situation like that, and they did just that. And it's also a run play there where he has the option to run the ball or have a soft corner. He sees that Shaw's a good 10 yards off of Montgomery, and he gets the ball out to Montgomery in a hurry, establishes Montgomery's confidence, and gets this offense continued. They, they always talk about getting that first first down, creating a rhythm, and controlling the down and distance. Hewitt set in front of Gaffney, second down and one. Gaffney thrown back, and did you see big number 94? Williams cleaned that up, and now comes around the corner, however. He was not stopped, breaking to the end zone. Dives for touchdown as he comes across, broke the plane. A running back just has to do that, different than a receiver. But what a great second effort by Gaffney. 35 yards out. He dives across, but it, the key to this play is when he broke away back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, let's see where the knee is. Looks like he looks like he crossed, broke the play in there. But, but I, I think everybody, including you and I, thought the play was over. But this is this is who Gaffney is. He did not give up on this play. What a tremendous effort by Gaffney! And a terrific effort by Gaffney. This is a young man that took a year off to play in the Pittsburgh Pirates farm organization. He called Coach Shaw after the Rose Bowl. Said, Coach, I'd like to talk to you. I'd like to come back and play football. Shaw said, I wanted to see him in the flesh. So I said, come up and see me. So he did. He went into his office and he said, all right, I'll take you back. You can get your scholarship in the spring and the rest, folks, is history. But he was a good enough baseball player that he could be headed back to the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. He could wind up playing both. And Williamson provides the difference with the extra point. Remember, the Trojans missed one. Tackle, 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 wrap up. So we welcome you back, 7-6 Stanford with the lead here after that outstanding run by Tyler Gaffney. Now Conrad Yukropina will kick it off, not Williamson. So Yukropina will put it in. Here comes Lee, back as a return man. We didn't expect to see this. The coaches thought that maybe they would use him just as a receiver, but Herbie, he's clearly 100% and ready to go. So Allen stays in as the running back. That was Vanuku who motioned out. They're using a lot of motion with the fullback here tonight, and now they throw to him. Second reception. He's already got a touchdown pass, and the Cardinal going to have to account for him. Shane Scove over to make the stop. But remember Stanley Havili, folks? Remember how good he was for the Trojans? Well, it's the same look, the fullback coming out as a receiver. Yeah, and, and that time, that was just a blown coverage by Stanford, and I think they just lost him. I mean, he, he sat out there in the flat forever. Nobody around him. And give, let's give Cody Kessler and his offensive line that time a lot of credit he started to his right worked all the way back to his left until he finally made that throw to Vanuku. now he's got three receivers stacked out to the right hand side Flournoy is one of them they come back with a run and it was read perfectly and Lions up to make the stop. And I think Stanford understands against this running game on early downs, they're willing to take some chances. There's Lions. He's a corner bringing that pressure. And I'll tell you, the guy to keep an eye on all night tonight is Henry Anderson. We always talk about Trent Murphy and Shane Scove. When it comes to defending the run, 91. Henry Anderson will be all over this USC offensive line trying to get penetration. Remember, they've lost Big Ben Gardner. He was an outstanding defensive lineman. They welcomed Anderson back. Second down and 12 now for Kessler. Fires it quickly to the outside. Aguilar, defender slipped, and that gave him a couple more yards. And Scove again cleans it up, and now there's a flag on the play. Personal foul, face mask. On the defense, number 15. A 15 yard penalty to be out of the end of the play with an automatic first down. More penalties already tonight than the entire game that they had against Oregon. It came in late right there, right as Aguilar was going down. Another miscue by Stanford. 
can see the part of the plan of what Stanford wants to do. They have such confidence in their front seven. Try to win the battle, try to stop the run, pressure the quarterback with the front, and try to keep a shell with their secondary and keep Lee and Aguilar in front of them to prevent the big play. First down and 10 now. Kessler, that near side, releases quickly to Lee. Lee with a fine cutback and picked up six or seven yards on that first down. Boy, Lee is so quick when he catches the ball with that step of his. I think people have forgotten about Marquise Lee on a national level because he's just been hurt. He has not had a chance to be healthy. I think tonight is probably the healthiest he's been in a long time. And just a little route like that, because of that quickness, you get him the ball in space. If you don't have leverage on the football and a bunch of white jerseys running there, Marquise Lee could take a route like that and take it to the end zone. There's a freshman receiver, Darius Rogers now out wide. And they'll come back with Allen on the run, and he barges for that first down. Tough run. Tarpley finally tackles him, but it'll be first down and 10. They'll move the trains. That is a nice job of sustaining the blocks on the right side. Vanuku, who's been busy catching the ball that time, he blocked Tarpley. Tarpley had to take on Vanuku to get off of him and then be able to take on Buck Allen. And Buck Allen has been coming on, and I think it has a lot to do with just being given an opportunity and also having that, that unique skill set of being physical and quick. So it is clear that the Trojans are going to run a different kind of running game than Oregon did. Not going to worry so much about the edges. They're going to try to keep that defensive front right in front of them and then throw like they do here. Kessler firing middle. Got it. That's Rogers. That's the freshman we talked about. He's out of nearby Compton. Went to Carson High School. And they brought pressure. They brought Shane Scove, the linebacker up the middle. I think they got away with a hold there in the middle of that offensive line. But it, it, because of how quickly Kessler's getting the ball out of his hands, he has just enough time. Look at the spacing. Look at the routes here by USC. They're stretching and spreading out this, this secondary and then finding the holes in the middle of the defense. Now it's a first down and 10 in the red zone. If you just joined us, the Trojans missed an extra point. That's why it's 7 6. Here comes Allen, young man from Tallahassee. Slips a tackle, breaks free for the end zone down at the one yard line. Lyons saves a touchdown on that. Here's the youngster from Lincoln High School. Had a lot of folks help him back down home. A great, great story in the Los Angeles Times today about this young man. What a running back. And watch the, the center and the right guard this time. Walker, he does a good job of stealing that and opening it up to give him some momentum running downhill. Boy, this offensive line right now, because of the balance of Clay Helton's attack with the play action, mixing in the run with the pass, they have done a great job job of establishing things up front that's what he did in the last couple of games three touchdowns in each of them now they pitch it to him on a counter and he'll walk in hello buck allen real name javoris nicknamed buck in high school because there was a teammate with a similar first name and when he came south to southern california they just said you are buck Gonna go for two after missing that extra point. I don't know if that's just to get the points or they just don't trust their kicker. It's been a long year for their kicker. <laughs> it could be either. What the heck? Might as well go or for both, two. by the way. <laughs> He's missed three extra points this year. It was a perfect letdown spot to be playing a Stanford Cardinal team. And this veteran Cardinal team is gonna have to regroup. Kessler rolls the pocket to the right. Aguilar is covered. Fires to the deep man. Got it. I believe they're conferring now. One might have set out. It is there. Good. Marquise Lee. You know, he's had a couple chances now in that area of the field. One where he just was about the half-yard line here on the two-point conversion. Breaks open late. Kessler finds him. No and he gets both, both, gets both feet down. He's getting ready for the next level. Absolutely. It's a, it's a showcase game for number nine. First round draft to his baby. You know, he's sending a message. I got a lot of teams in the NFL where <laughs> I'd like to have a receiver like this. There's the young man with his coach down on the sideline. He's only a redshirt sophomore. He has terrific hands, too. You'll see him as a receiver slipping out of the backfield. Ty Montgomery from the five-yard line. Down goes Montgomery around the 15-yard line. 
And that was Torrin Harris, defensive back. A little bit of a delay play again, and uh, here's here's Gaffney. But they know you're going to run the football, and they still can't stop it. Goes back to Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. Jimmy, have you got a tight end? No yeah, coach. Jimmy, have you got a fullback? And he did. Turned it around, and David Shaw just keeping it going. Second down and seven now. Throwing underneath, short of the first down. Good tackle. So they use the fullback here for the first time. Herbert. These are the things they have to do, little things they have to do to kind of break some tendencies and just not run, 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 run. They've got to do some things to be able to try to make these linebackers and safeties pay for being overcommitted. And they dump it out to Hewitt, give them a chance here on third and short. This is where they lived last Thursday night against Oregon in these third and one, third and three situations. They don't want to be facing third and eight, third and ten. Yeah, good point, because that's what they're going to face when we start the second quarter. They'll have a third and one coming up. USC leading Stanford here in Los Angeles. And we'll be back after this message and word from your local ABC stations. Third down and ten. on a screen play stumbling and not going to get it Stanford's going to be forced to punt well, that, and Ryan comes in the punt early. good call there on third down I think they were anticipating a blitz SC only brought four so they were in position there to be able to come down on Gaffney and keep him well short but he ended up slipping and losing his balance anyway before the phone rings off the hook of the truck I want to pass along that we've already asked Jonathan Martin for an interview and he has said no interviews tonight yeah okay here we go <laughs> we tried <laughs> appreciate Heather Aguilar fair catch the signal at the 21 yard line so we'll take a break USC leading favorite Stanford 14 7 first down and 10 now here's Kessler scoops up the low snap and drops it off to the running back I told you had good hands 40 45 down that far sideline barge luck Allen He's trying to get vertical and by going vertical he takes Shane Skull with him so he opens up a nice vacancy right here and he just checks it down he recognizes that hole checks it down to his back Allen and with the athletic ability on USC's offense just a check down like that you pick up huge yards now here's Trey Madden he's coming off an injury coaches want a few snaps for him tonight they were hopeful that they could get 10 to 15 from Trey Madden and give Allen a break the third running back they'll use is from Joliet Catholic just outside of Chicago, big fellow by the name of Ty Isaac. Looking forward to seeing him here tonight. But this is Madden. He's out of Mission Viejo High School. Boy, with a hamstring, as you know, you, you respect what he's trying to do on any any given carry with that fast twitch, that, that stuff you're not quite using in practice, you hope that it holds up for him. That's why they're questioning how long he can go tonight. And keep an eye on the two offensive tackles, 72 Wheeler and 77 Graf. Trojans need them to hold up here tonight. Deep throw, and here's Aguilar. Oh, what a couple of receivers. This is just a great job. We talk so much about Lee, but the next one in line is Nelson Aguilar, who's had a great year. Watch him adjust back to the football. The ball's under thrown. He finds it and comes back, and Alex Carter never saw the football. He's out there by himself against Aguilar. Aguilar sees it, goes up, and makes a catch. And I'll tell you what, Cody Kessler is in a rhythm right now, and that's a, a, a nice throw where he knows his receiver can see it and come back. Right now, he's, he's just he's in sync. He's 10 of 11 with his throws. That's a 26. Six-yard gain for Kessler, checking it off at the line of scrimmage here. And he keeps Madden in the game behind the right side, and the Cardinal defense rose to that run and uh, threw it back for a little bit of a loss, I believe. Keep going back to that, the importance of any offense, but especially SC and what they want to do against this front seven from Stanford. A balanced approach. 21 plays up to this point. They've had 10 runs and 11 passes. And I think that in order to be able to score and put points up on the board, they need touchdowns. They get down to the red zone. They're going to have to find Aguilar or, or, or uh, Marquise Lee down here. Find an opening or try to beat him in man-to-man. -man. They're going to have to throw to score down here. Now, Buck Allen checks back in as the running back. 
They're going to play act and give it back to him on a middle screen. Short of the first down. Now, the, the Trojans, Herbie, have had the ball three times tonight, and this is the third time they've been in the red zone. It's incredible what they've been able to do already. A couple touchdowns. I, I, you know, I think that the best thing that they're doing is they came into this game recognizing how talented Stanford's defensive line and their strength is the way they can get a great pass rush. So they've done a few things that slow them down. The, the screens, the quick throws, anything they can do to try to make Stanford. You can see hands on their hips. They're a bit fatigued there. Try to get them so they don't know what's coming. And they've done a heck of a job so far there. Offset ahead of him. Play action to Allen. They've got Penner, another fullback, and they couldn't get it to him. They've already scored one touchdown. Went to the well this time, and Stanford said, nothing doing, and Shane Scove was all over it. I, I, again, they're throwing the ball to the backs. Penner had a, had a step on Scove, and I, I think the guy that's the most frustrated there is the quarterback, Cody Kessler. First time all night. He had his feet under him. He was in rhythm, and he was disgusted with that throw. But SC has a chance for more points. Orger and holding his breath. Andre Hadari. A couple years ago, he was all Pac-12 conference. It's going downhill from there. 23 yarder. Slaps that one through. Big for the confidence. Now he can walk past Coach Orton. <laughs> Go get a cookie, big fella. <laughs> Kelsey Young has come in to return this kickoff and not Montgomery. Deep in the end zone, and Cummings holds him right there. First down and 10. Gaffney back in play action from Hogan gonna fire deep gonna go for it all incomplete and he overthrew his wide receiver that time there was pressure Rector was the receiver and Leonard Williams big Leonard Williams who we've heard so much about SC is just putting everybody at the line and they got pressure here they, they're bringing everybody I mean look at this you, you can't pick them all up they tried to max protect, but they still got there and affected him. But I like to call first and 10. You've got a defense that's crowding the line of scrimmage. Why not take a shot? Just try to stretch the defense back a bit. But they're going to have to hit one or two of those to really make SC try to start to respect that passing game. Second down and 10. Play action again. Far side, got the first down pass. Slipped it over there to Jordan Pratt, I believe, was the receiver out of there, catching his first pass of the night. Brent, look at the USC defense. I mean, you got eight bodies that are just they're waiting for the running game, so you have one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and guys have to win that matchup. Pratt does a good job coming back to the ball. If there's a weakness for, for USC this year, I think it's you can attack them through the air. If you can protect, I think you have chances to make plays in the passing game, and I think that's going to be the adjustment that we see from David Shaw along with the offensive coordinator Mike Bloomgren. First down and 10. And around Montgomery trying to get that speed. First down as he blasts his way to the 34 yard line. Kevin Seymour there for the Trojans. You play at, you go you go with a little fake into the middle which holds the defense just long enough. And we've had three play calls on this drive to start this drive. One where they went deep downfield. The second one a pass for the first down. And now a reverse. They're starting to do some things to make this USC defense have to adjust and think. Pillard moving around. One of the linebackers. Hogan under pressure. Made the most of it. Picked up a good couple of yards as he went up the middle. There's a flag on this play, however. Sorrow was the defender who brought him down. Pac-12 crew, Land Clark, the referee, Matt Jordan's his umpire. Holding. Defense. First you don't, you don't see a hold on the defense on a running play very often. First down and 10, Gaffney's the running back. Just shy of the 10-yard line. One second. Got it off, and here comes Gaffney. This will be second down and a long. Clancy Pendergrass, the defensive coordinator, is going to be very proud. He wants him to run downhill. Run downhill when you get your reads. Get down there in a hurry. Get around those offensive linemen and those big tight ends with quickness. That time he went right around Kyle Murphy. They're beating the tackles and the offensive linemen to the spot with quickness with these linebackers. There's this big jumbo look. Kyle Murphy, additional blocker. 
Because he wears 94, of course, he's also a receiver. He's going to try to power. Gaffney slips a tackle, but not the second. And that was Hayes Pollard. Same guy. <laughs> he's going to make the tackle, but a lot of guys are doing their job up front to free him up to slide to the outside. Kennard almost made the play in the backfield. Big 42, who's having a great year. He does a good job of knifing down underneath the block of the tight end. But there's nobody left there to pick up Hayes Pollard, who's making a lot of tackles tonight. He leads his team in tackles coming in. Three wide receivers. Montgomery at the bottom. Drops it again. Montgomery's had the dropsies here in the first half. Three passes that he could have caught. And this would have been a, a, a great catch, but this is why you work so hard on accuracy from a quarterback spot. It looked like he almost stepped to the outside and tried to throw that back into the middle. The ball got away from him a little bit there, and you're right. He could have made that play, but still would have been short of the first down. That's a different field goal, man. This is Rukopina. Conrad Rukopina with a 27-yard hurt here for the Cardinal to make it a 7. He's over on that right half. Slaps it through. Good first half. It's going to be a war in the second half. Not the first. It's going to be a good game. Ed Orger leads his charges off to the Trojan locker room. Let's go down to Heather with Coach Shaw. Coach, you said you came into the game with the goal of having more offensive balance, but how do you feel about what you're getting out of your run game so far? Uh, we're doing okay. We're not doing great. They're outplaying us right now. Uh, they're, they're moving the pile. Uh, Tyler Gaffney's running great. We got to give him some holes to run into. What do you see as your biggest challenge in the second half? Relaxing and just playing football. That's it. You know, it's, it's a big game. It's a loud crowd, and SC's playing one heck of a game. We got to relax and just play our game. We'll let you get to them. Thanks, Coach Shaw. Thanks, Heather. Remember now, USC won the coin toss and deferred. So they'll have the ball to start the second. We come to the end of the first half. Stay tuned now after these messages for the Capital One Halftime Report. Coming up. So we welcome you back to Saturday Night Football on ABC, the Los Angeles Coliseum. And young Cody Kessler warming up on that sideline for the Trojans. He's guided them to a 17-10 lead here at halftime. But can they keep it up against this veteran Stanford team? That's the that's the big key. And I think coming in, that was the big question. Could Stanford be able to come in here and, and in the second half take the football game over? Remember, SC plan with close to 50 scholarship players. So you wonder if depth becomes an issue in this second half. Marquise Lee is the return man for the Trojans. Slips a tackle, but he's still thrown down inside the 15-yard line by Wayne Lyons. Oh Allen will open as the running back. Kessler, the efficient quarterback, snaps off first. Marquise Lee breaks past midfield, still going, and has taken three and then four Cardinal players to finally bring him down as he came across the 45-yard line with a 27-yard gain. And look at the linebackers here coming up. You had, well, you had Scove sit back, but Tarpley came, and what a, what a call here by SC on the first play to start the second half. First and 10, they get him back away, and they get the ball to Marquise Lee. A great route, and a good job by Kessler getting the ball in a hurry to Marquise Lee and hits him right in stride. Remember now, Clay Helton, after Lane Kiffin was fired, Clay Helton moved down from the box. He is the offensive play caller over there on the sideline. He's the offensive coordinator at Memphis, and he ran a wide open attack. This one's a little bit different as we check in down below. Anderson made that tackle. Let's go to Heather. Well, Brent, a very intense coach Ordron came out of the locker room wanting to tighten up a few things in the second half. He talked about third down conversions, wanting to be better than the two for four that they were in the first half. Also said we've got to do a better job tackling and hitting the screens on offense. He was very pleased with his red zone offense, credited the play calling, and talked about it being a battle here in the second half. Yeah, indeed. Just what uh, we you would expect there is Clay Helton calling plays down on the field and here tonight he has kept the Stanford defense off balance second down and nine Kessler has plenty of time couldn't find a receiver now stove in pursuit and Kessler will throw it away save a loss of yardage on it but it does bring up a third and nine Stanford only rushed three Plenty of time, great job of protecting him, but when you rush three, you drop eight, and there's nobody open downfield. 
defense is going to try to apply as much pressure as they can. Derek Mason, the defensive coordinator, likes to mix things up when he gets you down third down in these long situations. Sometimes he'll show pressure, rush three, drop eight. Other times he'll blitz his linebackers at the very last second to try to affect the offensive line and their pass protection. Now Trey Madden checks in as the running back. Good to see the number 72, Chad Wheeler, returned as the left tackle alongside Turk. And there, out of bounds, is Fornoy. Yeah, you know, third down, you got to you got to get to the first down marker. Fornoy here, you know, he's he's in motion, and I don't know if he was affected by coming out there and, and getting a little bit of a jam there by Carter, but that, that's almost just a wasted play there. You've got to get more depth and get to that first down marker. It was a little bit of a surprise there on third down. Alvarado is in to punt. Whitfield is back deep to return this for the Cardinal. Fair catch is the signal at the seven yard line. So that's where the Cardinal will have it on their first possession of the second half, trailing USC by seven. 93 yards away for the Stanford Cardinal. They would like to exert some authority in this game with this drive to open the second half and trailing by seven points. Gaffney carried the ball 12 times in the first half. He is set behind Hewitt. Kevin Hogan sees eight guys up close to the line of scrimmage, now nine. Gaffney runs into the nine and slips through for a nice first down game. SC in the first half got very, very aggressive with their linebackers. Defensive line did their work, but Sorrow doing what he needs to do, and Hayes Pollard both. See how they attack the line of scrimmage? That's how they've been challenged this week. Build, get some depth in the initial lineup, and then build up some momentum and speed to come after that offensive line that's trying to climb up to the second level. You be the aggressor. Here comes the extra big tackle, 6'7", 295, number 94, Kyle Murphy. San Clemente, he's on the right side of the formation. Hogan's going to throw, give him time protection, and he got it to Rector. Michael Rector just checked in from the sideline, and he's got the first down for the Cardinal. And this is what I think Stanford's going to have to do to, to be able to come back and win this game. you got to win some one-on-one -on -one battles on the outside. You can see that the SC defense respects the speed of Rector. He's a 4-4 guy, so he can get by you in a hurry. He, he kind of comes off the line like he's going downfield, and then the timing there between Ho Hogan and Rector in perfect sync there to pick up that first down. Jordan Pratt receiving from Monmouth, Oregon, checks in for the Cardinal. They'll come back with Gaffney around the left side. Got the edge. First down again. Out near midfield before he is finally brought down by Hayes Pollard. Boy, what a great job of sealing the edge. The right guard here is going to come around. Dancer, watch how he leads this. And then he just pins him. Hewitt picks up the block. That's the way Stanford's running game usually works. Remember, Mike Bloomgren and David Shaw, they show a lot of different personnel groupings and formations in the first half. They see how you play it. They make their adjustments at halftime. And then they try to formation you to try to get you out of position and then they try to become much more aggressive in the second half 22 yards on that and now Gaffney is over 100 for the game 107 to be exact play action to him and they slip it to Montgomery on the outside Montgomery shy of the 40 yard line he was brought down Anthony Sorrow was there now they, they want to try to move him around and get him the football. He's, ma he's manned up there with Shaw. Looks like he might be in the backfield. Then he just comes right back out there. Now it's one-on-one. -on -one. Shaw make the play in open field. Gets around him. You can see a, a, a very aggressive SC defense there. Look at all these bodies trying to chase him down. But a good, again, little change up there on first and ten. Get the ball out in the speed there in the, in the uh, open space for Montgomery. All right, we go to the Wildcat. Gaffney's going to get the direct snap. Hogan came off the field now. They flare number 39, Young, who was a running back, now a wide receiver. So they show a play that we have not seen, and there is a flag on it. So there's a penalty. Kelsey Young got the carry off the Wildcat from Gaffney. Holding. Mm. Offense, number 89. Ten yards Devin Kajust. 
out there trying to pick up a block on the perimeter, trying to do what he can on that stock block to help Kelsey Young pick up more yards to the top left-hand corner there. Good block until right there at the end. He locks up there with Josh Shaw. And you, you see that formation this year with Gaffney, kind of that wildcat. He takes the direct snap. They always use Kelsey Young in motion. And then you have a chance to either hand it to Young or obviously he can pull it and run the ball himself. Hogan checks back in. Kajus guilty of that hold on that play. Second down and four. Gaffney for another first down. And Robert here, USC leads Stanford 17 10 early in the third quarter. The Cardinal with a first down just across the Trojans 40 yard line. Kevin Hogan, the junior from McLean, Virginia, out of Gonzaga. College DC off the play action. Looking down the middle, perfect strike to the 20 yard line on that first down. And that is Devon Kajust from Seaford, New York. Well, they, this is how you mix it up. This is a first and 10 call. Four wide receivers, shotgun. They pump it out to the right like they're going to throw it out there to Montgomery. But all along, he knows that he's going to have the hole right in the middle of that defense. And you're, Brent, you said it. That, that is a frozen rope here. So he kind of looked out at Montgomery. He gets pressure. He looks right into Leonard Williams beyond him and makes that throw right on the money there to Kajust. For 19 yards and a first down at the red zone now for the Cardinal. The impressive drive. Going deep. Going for the touchdown. Wants Rector out of the end zone. Incomplete. And it was pretty good coverage on that play by the Trojans. Kevin Seymour from nearby Pasadena was running with him. You can see almost a completely different approach to start this second half from Stanford's offense. Much more aggressive with the play calling, mixing up the formations on first and ten. And now they've taken that aggressive SC defense. Now they've got them looking at each other, trying to make adjustments and calls on the fly because of the variety of looks that they're getting. They've driven 72 yards. Remember, they came out from their own eight-yard line. Second down and ten. Montgomery's the motion receiver, and he got the handoff. And he is pushed out of bounds on that far side by Sorrow, Anthony Sorrow. He's from Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey, the linebacker on the play. And Demetrius Wright is right here. Watch how he recognizes the movement. And all of a sudden, he starts to race. It's a foot race between Wright trying to get out there to the corner. And a good job of getting off the blocks there also by Sorrow. But the recognition there from the free safety at that time, Wright helped try to slow that play down. Big passing situation here for Kevin Hogan. Facing a third down and eight. Montgomery, one of the three wideouts. And instead they run for it. Gaffney to the end zone. His second touchdown. Everybody in the building thought that Hogan was going to throw. And here came number 25, an 18-yard touchdown. And they're an extra point away from a tie. A beautiful, beautiful 92-yard drive. Ray, you go back to this pre-snap read by Kevin Hogan. Watch Kevin Hogan and recognize this defense. Even on third and long, he says, kill, kill, kill right here. He sees the matchup that he wants to be able to run the football on third and long. He gets Yankee and Hewitt to lead the way through and it surprised SC's defense because of the formation and down and distance. Ukropina has become the extra point man here tonight. The number two kicker out of Pasadena, California, Loyola High School ties it. So here comes Gaffney. Stanford's opening drive this half after they force the punt. David Shaw, the Cardinal, back in business. The beautiful John McKay Center opened in July 2012, houses the locker room and coaches' offices for the football team and a lot of other facilities for the USC student athletes here. Right now we're deadlocked at 17 as we continue the Dr. Pepper road to the championship. And those two burners, Lee and Aguilar, are back deep for the Trojans. And again, that new kicker. Kopina will kick it off as we expected, but we did not expect to see him on the extra points. From the five yard line, here comes Marquise Lee. Picks his way and he's down around the 20. And Brent, you go back to that touchdown and the, uh, Kevin Hogan seeing split safeties. You know, on third down and long, he sees a couple safeties. That's why he says kill, 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 because now what he sees is he has six guys in this box. 
and he's got six guys of his own to be able to handle that six in the box. So he, even on third and long, he decides to count on that offensive line, and Gaffney, even though it's been a bit of a struggle here, but watch the block by Yankee. The All-American left guard leads his way through. Anthony Sorrow, unfortunately, has to take that on, and it opens up with those split safeties. Gaffney gets all the way to the end zone. All right, Allen in as the running back. Trying to stretch it and not. Thrown for a loss by a man of his own. Trying to outflank this defense, which is tough to do. They're not only physical, they do a really good job of getting to the outside. And a man of nobody picked him up. He was free. And that was a Cody Kessler check up at the line of scrimmage. I'm surprised that they went with that because there's not enough people on the on the edge of the on the uh, tight end and the perimeter there to pick up a man of now, sacks, of course, count against your rushing total in college, unlike the NFL. But this total rushing tonight is eight yards, eight yards total for the Trojans in this game. Madden is a running back. They throw short to Lee, and that's just about back at the original well, line of scrimmage. That's not going to get you anything. Ten of their 16 plays now in the second half have gone for narrow zero or negative yards. And, and when you're losing the battle up front, up front in the trenches, and you can't run the football, and you don't have even a threat to run the football, and they know you're going to throw with this group that they have and the way they can get after a quarterback, eventually you're going to have to make a play downfield to a Marquise Lee or Nelson Aguilar to try to slow down such an aggressive defense from Stanford. Need 11 for a first down here. And here comes that aggressive defense. Steps up beautifully in the pocket, just short of that. Aguilar reaches for it and got the first down. Great effort by Nelson Aguilar out of Tampa, Florida, went to Berkeley Prep High School. I talked to Lane Kiffin this week about this game and about some of these players. And when he talked about Nelson Aguilar, he had such admiration for the technician and the worker that he is, whether it's studying film, working on his route running. How about the effort here? He's a yard and a half or two yards short when he makes the catch. And there's a man who's been all over the field. But that effort and determination picks up this first down. And who knows what it could do to this drive if they get points on the board. A penner is now in as the fullback. Madden is the tailback. The Trojans are out to the 45-yard line. Play action on first down. Kessler rolling to the right and incomplete. Aguilar was diving for it on that far sideline. And that'll bring up second and ten now. Looking back here on the back side, this is Rodgers, the freshman. And this is just part of the growth. It's easy to see from up here. I'm aware of that. But this is one of the looks you need to find. If he looks back on the back side there, and he had plenty of time to be able to do that, he had his freshman, Darius Rodgers, all alone. And that was a big 15 or 20-yard gain. Derek Mason, the defensive coordinator for Stanford, is having a heck of a second half. There seems to be a tell in what the Trojans are coming up with. And they reset that defense and they try to match up now. There's three wide out to the right here on second down and 10. So they run Madden. And Madden with his best run of the game crosses midfield. And it'll be just a little shy, but pretty manageable here, Herbie, now on third down. Yeah, and, and anytime a young man is dealing with a hamstring injury and the coach says, we hope to get 15 snaps from him, you always hold your breath when he, when he gets out like that and, and takes off. He looks like he's okay. They're just going to give him a breather. But he's doing a good job of trying to battle through and help this offense out. Well, we've come to the end of the third quarter. Stanford and USC tied at 17. Back with the money quarter after this message and a word from your local ABC stations. There you see the coach's trophy presented by Dr. Pepper. That'll be awarded the winner of the Vizio BCS National Championship January 6th. Pasadena nearby Rose Bowl. Two games coming up January 1st, January 6th. Rose Bowl in the championship game. Allen back in as the running back here on third and three. Trouble City. Cody slips a tackle. Great move by the quarterback and incomplete. Aguilar wanted a flag on it. He thought that he was interfered with, but Alex Carter was all over the wide receiver. Watch the blitz again by Shane Scove. The timing of it right here. He knows how he does this every single week. The very last second he gets in there, he goes right through Buck Allen, almost gets to the quarterback, and that's what forced Kessler out of the pocket. Cody Whitfield. Back deep. Trojans on fourth down and three. Stanford making sure that it's not a fake. And he ran into the punter. 
No flag that we see. Thrown by the referee. The crowd's upset. That's the punter back there. That's Chris Alvarado. I'm surprised Alvarado didn't go down. Well, I thought that he I was mean, run into on yeah, this at the very least. He's run into, and he should have just he's got to go down. Murphy runs right into him, knocks him down, tries to lift him back up. He is down. <laughs> I mean, go down. He's down. Yeah, you're right. How far down do you want him? Into the ground. Oh, harder. Dig, a, dig a hole. <laughs> Time out. Stanford football tied at 17, 14.45 remaining. They'll be coming out from their own 15-yard line. Kevin Hogan. The junior quarterback, Tyler Gaffney, is his running back, and he's run tough like that all season long. As we take a look, Herbie, at our Pacific Life game summary. Uh, interesting first half. USC had a chance to, to kind of jump out, which is exactly what they did. Cody Kessler with a touchdown pass, gets the ball thrown downfield. This is where Aguilar checked to it, a two-point conversion. They were rolling. They had 14 points in the first half. Who gives Stanford a lot of credit? They've kept their poise on the road in the second in the second half starting to take a little bit more command of the of the trenches much more aggressive on both offense and defense and we're knotted up at 17. And you can see why the coaches leave number 25 out there he's been impressive all night long stopped on that one but he's rushed for 138 yards and two touchdowns here tonight that's Tyler Gaffney and, and, and he's the rascal who carried 45 times for 157 yards and a touchdown against Oregon. Yeah, he's, he's averaged 34 carries the last three weeks and Stanford, you know, they, they are a body blow, body blow, body blow kind of offense. This is where they hope those body blows start to take over, especially a defense lacking depth like SC's. Hogan and complete to Montgomery, slipping but got the first down. Ty Montgomery lines up now in that backfield. And again, that sort of a read option look, Herbie, and uh, and Hogan keeps it himself and uh, goes for about nine yards. What's he looking yeah, at? He's reading right here. He's reading Devin Kennard, and if he t if he takes the back, and everybody's anticipating, oh, Montgomery's in the backfield. He's going to have it. He just does a great job of reading it. If Kennard would have stayed with him, he would have given it to him around the corner, but instead, his eyes go out there. He makes the read, does a good job of pulling it out, and then he's got a nice running lane back inside into the interior of that defense and again these are the little change-ups that David Shaw and Mike Bloomgren have to have to prevent SC just from anticipating and, and expecting that powerful running game. Well, Gaffney checks back in. He's alongside Hogan on this second and one. Hogan under pressure able to get it off and it is complete to Rector. Rector 40, 35. Beautiful run after the catch to the 24-yard line before he is finally brought down. But how about this young man from Gig Harbor, Washington? Watch, watch Josh Shaw just get lost. He gets lost in coverage. He starts to bail. He's assuming Rector again is going to go downfield. That's what he's known for, is to go downfield and make catches. So he gets lost. He turns around. By the time he gets turned around, Rector's a guy you want to be very careful with. He averages close to 40 yards a catch because he can get downfield in such a hurry. 28 yards. First down of 10, slipping. He's able to make the handoff. Gaffney breaks. He's got two touchdowns already. Still going to the five-yard line. Pollard saves the touchdown. They're going to pull around the right guard here. Dancer's going to lead his way. They have some success throwing the football. Good effort there by the quarterback, Hogan, to get him the ball. But by throwing just a bit, it opens it up. It gets that SC defense a little bit back on their heels. You get better blocking angles for the guards and those big tackles. And they open up a big crease there for Tyler Gaffney. 19 yards, 157 yards for Gaffney for the game. Wildcat formation. Gaffney will take the direct snap. And thrown for a loss back to the 10 yard line. Outstanding play by Tavai. Tavai comes on and makes the stop. Tavai is right in this area right here. He's just going to come in from behind. He actually just finds a crease and just beats him with quickness. The tight end was slow to react. And Tavai, that's the one thing that he has is he has tremendous quickness. He's a bit un undersized when he gets out there or when he gets into the interior of this defense, but he uses his suddenness and quickness that time just knifed underneath the, the big offensive line. Second and goal, but the ball is back out now by the 10-yard line. Logan tries to set the screen at Gaffney and drop the football. 
at about the 13 yard line and so that brings up a third down from the 10 yard line for David Shaw and the Cardinal. He told us this week when we talked to him they get down into the red zone they do not want to have to settle for field goals they want touchdowns down here and at this point in the game they sure would like a touchdown on the road with a tie game in the fourth quarter. from Lakewood High School in California with an interception. And I don't think he ever saw Deion Bailey. I think he threw that to a spot, and I, th I don't think he ever caught number 18 sitting there. It was a third and goal from the 10-yard line when Bailey makes this pick. And he's right off here to the edge of the defense, or to the offense here, and he's just sitting there because he's coming underneath. I think Hogan just locked in to Montgomery. Doesn't even see. Look, he throws it right to Deion Bailey. Bailey was a former linebacker. They sometimes play him at what they call the big corner. Tonight, he's playing some safety. Great job of recognizing that ball and making a huge play for SC's defense. And Vanuku back in as a fullback. Foot race in trouble. Drops it off. Did a great job of turning that play with Grimble, the receiver, his second catch here tonight. Grimble's got talent as a tight end. And a great job there by Cody Kessler, kind of baiting him. See, there's the, there's this young man who makes the catch there, Grimble, and he has Trent Murphy up against him. He started to block him, Murphy got around him, and Kessler just waited just long enough until he dumped it down to him. But Alex Carter, starting corner, 25, a sophomore, is off the field right now. Ronnie Harris is in for him. Be surprised if SC at some point doesn't try to challenge him. And Harris is off. Now he'll tighten up a little bit on second down and two. Madden does not get the first down. Here comes your third down play coming up here now for USC. Stay tuned after the game, except for the West Coast, late local news over most of these ABC stations, and then go over to ESPN Sports Center highlights for the day in sports. So here comes your third down now with the clock inside of four and a half minutes. That defense on that last play, boy, they, they're still moving around with Scove and Josh Morrow. Such quickness for their size. Cody Kessler's going to try to throw for it. Incomplete. It is fourth down and two. Jordan Richards was right there defensively, along with Reynolds. And uh, we've got a player shaken up, and that is Richards. He's down. And then a double slant on, and the ball was thrown in a position where Aguilar, you would think, could be able to make this catch. Grimble takes a couple defenders there. The linebacker, Hep Scott, also Scove. Eh, it would have been a, a great catch, but he still had a chance there to be able to hold on to that football on a big third down. Alvarado. Into punt. Whitfield is back deep for the Cardinal. Coming down inside a 345 here in regulation. Fair catch is the signal by Whitfield at the 32 yard line, and that's where the Cardinal will have the football. Tied at 17. Can the Cardinal make it five in a row over USC? We'll find out. Sliding reception attempt there that time. Get coming up with it is Jordan Pratt. Keep talking about the, the, the way these receivers outside of Ty Montgomery have to help Kevin Hogan. And when they're left on an island, they've got to be able to get some separation to give Hogan a chance. Plenty of time with three timeouts for Stanford to work the clock, try to get in field goal range, or try to get in the end zone. Second and two, and they're going to let Hogan fling it again. Throws it away, deflected, intercepted, and a penalty flag. Now pulling it down now was Cravens. A penalty flag came flying as it was batted up in the air over there. Hogan was in trouble, and instead of throwing it away, 
He tried to make a play, but hold on here. Ty Montgomery was out of bounds and came back in. I don't think he was forced out of bounds. That, of course, would give USC the interception. That's right. Illegal touching. Offense number seven. There was chaos where Kevin Hogan tries to keep the play alive. And he's pushed there. He, not only is he pushed, he's thrown out of bounds. So Cravens came up with the big interception. He's a freshman from right here in Los Angeles. And that has given the Trojans the ball here on a first down and 10. Allen is a running back. Now it's Kessler going deep downfield. Incomplete. And Harris had the coverage yeah. on Marquise Lee, so they did take a strike at number 21, Herbie, just as you predicted they would. Yeah, it, you just felt that they might take that chance, and he just threw it behind Marquise Lee, who's holding his thumb. But I, I, I still want to go back to this illegal touching. Josh Shaw throws Ty Montgomery out of bounds. He's able to come back into play there. He touches the football, but he didn't go out of bounds on his own. Second down and 10 now for Cody Kessler, the redshirt sophomore. Running game and nothing doing. And that was Trent Murphy making the stop. Coming up after the game, stay tuned for the Ford wrap-up with Robert Flores. So here comes third down for the Trojans. 240 remaining in regulation. Tough third down late in this game where Marquise Lee goes out of the game with an apparent injury. He has actually hobbled back out onto the field. He'll be in the slot to the right here. Kessler fires complete. Is across midfield, and uh, Aguilar could not get loose for the first down that time, and that's going to bring up your fourth down across midfield. Yeah, th this is this is where Coach O is the head coach. He's got to make a decision based on the way his defense has been playing and. It's the confidence that he might have in Cody Kessler in this offense. Fourth down and two here. Buck Allen back in as a running back. Low snap, picks it up, fires on the slot. Marquise Lee got a first down. The gamble pays off. He shows the confidence in his team and his offense by going for it with a game on the line, possibly, in the blitz right into the face of Kessler. Scove got there a bit late, but here, how about the effort here by Marquis Lee against Amanda? He just went out of the game, comes back in, gets just enough room there, and a heck of a throw by Cody Kessler. The ball is at the 35-yard line. Marquis Lee... Not only hobbling off, he went down on the field. He's going to the sideline there, Brent. There's 1.05 showing on the clock and starting. The field goal man is ready here. First down and 10. Allen to the 31-yard line. Andre Hadari from Bakersfield, California, out of Stockdale High School, is over there working on the net. Where Hadari has had a a rough year this year. I remember in the Notre Dame game, he was one of three. He's 11 of 18 coming into tonight. See, he's got a strong leg, career long of 52 yards. It's just been about consistency this year. The USC Trojans, an underdog at home, moving in on an attempt for a winning field goal against the Stanford Cardinal. A lot of folks in Oregon are saying, come on, Trojans, march in, get this win. Kessler rolls to the right, throws in underneath. Aguilar breaks loose. 
and made the field goal a whole lot easier. Boy, what a throw again from Kessler. This window is tight. I mean, you're talking about putting it just in a right spot. You've got about six inches here to put it where he can make a play on the ball and then be able to break the tackle. That was the key, is giving him a chance to be able to get away from a man and then get upfield for another 15 yards. Now you're trying to just get it into the middle of the field and use that last time out. Is tripped up, gave up yard, yard and a half. Morrow making the stop for the Cardinal. And David Shaw is going to be using his timeouts. Second down at 13. Stanford pounds the front. And Allen gives up a few more yards. Trent Murphy throws him back to the 30-yard line, making this field goal just a little trickier. I, 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 obviously, Stanford is going to do everything they can to get upfield. SC is getting conservative because they're just trying to work for this field goal, but the last two plays stretching it, they have lost eight yards in the last two plays. They went from the big play by Aguilar and thinking, hey, we got a pretty manageable shot here. Let's get it in midfield or in the middle of the field. Now they're losing yards in a hurry. So there's Hidari, who is struggled the last couple of years after being I believe he was the all Pac-12 kicker when uh, he started in the last two plays they've given up a total of nine nine yards or just as you mentioned he dives forward to uh, to center it up here on this fourth down yeah. so the kicking team uh, will get ready here Cody Kessler is the holder on this play. That's why he's staying out there on the field. Andre Hadari. So a couple of youngsters from different high schools in Bakersfield, California. We'll try to win this game for USC. Meanwhile, David Shaw's kicked defense team getting set here to see what they can do if they get any penetration remember coach O saying in the meeting talking about kickers he talked this week about you know in last week about maybe having a battle in practice this year this week he decided to stick with him and you're asking him about you know his thoughts on it and he's like he's a kicker. I mean what else do you want me to say he's a kicker and now the game comes down to a kicker who's got plenty of leg but Hasn't had that consistency. Can he put it through right here to win this game? Looks like it's going to be put down on the 37. So this will be a 47-yard field goal attempt for USC. True. Is it far enough? Yes. The fourth down gamble by Ed Ordren. Don't forget it. It could be the gamble that makes him the permanent head coach at USC. Boy, this is about as good as you can do it for Hadari, who has been struggling. We mentioned the Notre Dame game, a game that they lost. He was one of three. He's 11 for 18. He was 0 of 1 last week. Missed an extra point. He's missed three extra points on the year. But when the game's on the line, he delivers. And gets into full sprint mode to the other end zone. <laughs> this team has been through so much this year. To still have the guts and the courage to keep fighting. It says a lot about these players. Coach O gets a lot of attention, but I know you would agree. It says a lot about the assistant coaches on this team as well. Absolutely. And internally, there are some strong players. Oh, yeah. I, I'm impressed with Marquise Lee going to the NFL next year. Could have hobbled off, yeah. taking the rest of the night off. Gamer Said he came that. back. He was a gamer. Made a big play. Just things fun. like that yeah. that add up here for the Trojans, Herbie. And you're exactly right now. Ty Montgomery. And they're lining up for a short kick here with, with 19 seconds remaining. Remember the penalty takes that ball back to the 20-yard line. So Montgomery is going to field this. 
around the 15 yard line. There is going to be a return. So it's not quite over yet for the Cardinal because of that penalty. Remember, he leads the nation in kickoff return yards. Dari on the ground, on the bounce, high hop. Montgomery pulls it down at the 20. Now he'll try to reverse his field, and he's cut off. The Trojans stay in their lanes, and they down him at the 22. And that was Vanaku, the outstanding special teams player. What a motor he has. Vanuku, number 31 from Eureka, California. And he's one of the best special teams players in the Pac-12. What a job. The last two or three days that we've been here, everybody's been telling us about Vanuku on kickoff coverage. Even Pat Hayden's been saying, I'm telling you, as a former broadcaster, keep a camera on 31. This guy is spectacular on coverage. Nine seconds. Trailing by three. it off again batted loose ball the Trojans are relevant again USC upset Stanford Oregon jumps to first in a Pac-12 North UCLA and USC are headed for a big showdown Football? Nothing. All class there by David Shaw. Always has been classy. There's Pat Hayden, my old colleague, and now the athletic director. He always goes down to the field in the second half, congratulates the coaches. Down there with the players, he was an outstanding quarterback. Right here with the Trojans. I mean, it's been a long time. We've been coming here a long time to watch games. It's been a long time since we've seen this here. Let's go down to Heather with Andre Hadari. Heather. Brad, thanks so much, Andre. Congratulations. After you made that winning field goal, you sprinted down the field. What was going through your mind as you made that sprint? It's a great team win. You know, we, uh, we work every day and we try to do what we can to win. So, you know, Coach O's get he's brought us through a lot. In that adversity, so you know it's just a great team. Or it's not even. It's a great team win for all of us. We needed this, we wanted this, and we got it. I know you spend your life as a kicker training for these moments, but describe the moments leading up to that kick when you guys were losing yardage instead of gaining it. You had a camera in your face as you're trying to warm up. What is that like? Hey, you know you just gotta go through your routine. Three steps back, two steps over. Look at your. That's all that matters. Earlier in the game, you did miss a PAT. What was your confidence level like as you went to make that game-winning field goal? Uh, you know, I knew my team had my back. At the very end of the day, I knew my team was going to come out. They made that two-point conversion, and they got my back. And, you know, I praised them for it after they made that. So I'm glad I just got a chance to come up and start a 47-yarder to win it. What does a win like this do for this team, especially in the situation you guys have been in? Uh, no limits from here. You know, we, the sky's the limit. We can do anything we want with this team, and we're going to go for it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. So there is the winning coach, Ed Orgeron. And, folks, last week, he sent a note to every member of that Trojan band thanking them for being the spirit of this university. So they bring him over and honor him as he climbs up to that podium. And now some of the players will also go up there. There's Vanuku, Soma Vanuku, the great fullback. Remember, he scored their first touchdown on that pass here tonight. So again, USC upset Stanford 20 to 17. Irby, a quick final thought. Yeah, just a tremendous effort here. Great football game by both teams. They battled, and at the end, Cody Kessler and the Trojans found a way to get it done. Let's go to Robert Flores. Robert, it's a happy Coliseum, my friend. The Trojans did it.